Over the last few weeks, we've really been anticipating that some type of big move was coming. Whether that be good, whether that be bad, we were a little bit unsure. But I must say that even yesterday, I made a video saying, is this the bear market? And I went over certain criteria that had to be met in order for us to truly see a fall down into the low 20s to mid 20,000 range. Well, what I wanted to talk about today is now that that has happened, now that we started to meet some of that criteria, we've fallen below 30K and things are looking pretty red. I'm going to talk to you guys about what I'm doing, the exact points at which I will be buying safe moon ada bitcoin xrp polygon etc when i will be buying a bitcoin and all of my altcoins as well because in these phases when everyone's freaked out when there's flood when no one's excited when everyone's scared when crypto twitter is going off the charts that is has been from my experience some of the absolute best times to buy at the moment and so you know or up until this point and so what i want to talk about today again is exactly when i'm buying what i'm buying and why i'm doing so and let's go ahead and let's start right now so one thing I want to talk about is when I've bought in the past. Okay, well, over the last few months, I've really only bought in three points. I bought point number one, point number two, and I actually bought a little bit last night. I bought about 2,000 ADA, and I bought a little bit of Meta Hero. I would say like two or three days ago, but that was not, the Meta Hero purchase wasn't in relation to this fall at all. It's just a project that I'm a really big fan of, especially considering they won Gem Finders and all of those things. But one thing I want to talk about is where I've been buying and why I've been doing so. Well, the first thing that I've been buying and the reason that I've been accumulating within these three different um, regions is because it's whenever we've cl we're clearing our 1618. Now, this is a very important point of support that I actually didn't think that we would end up breaking below. I was going to be pretty shocked, but I knew that if this bull run was going to continue, we would have to maintain this. Now, we still have a good few days until the week does close, and so we could see some type of bounce that closes above this 1618, but personally speaking, this is my zone that I'm saying, well, if it, the bull run is going to continue, this is likely where the bottom could be. So with that being said, that was point number one. That's why I was buying that, but that's something we've talked about before, so definitely go check out some past videos if you do want to see you know, more info on why I specifically chose around the 1618. But I want to talk about where the bottoms could be going forward. Where would I be mass accumulating at? Okay, because I've been sitting on cash. I've been keeping like, I would say probably about 80% of all capital on the sidelines. I've not been buying, I've not been doing anything. I've just been watching it. You know, as time has gone on, I've started to make a little bit more. And so I was just like, just building up that cash position, just waiting for the perfect opportunities to say, okay, this is probably one of the best justified entries that I could possibly have made. And the same goes to show just with this little 1618 region right here. It goes to work the same. Even if Bitcoin does start to fall and, you know, continues downward, I'm okay with this. I'm okay with having bought here and it continues downward because it's justifiable. I don't regret it whatsoever because just as easily as it started to go down, it could have worked its way back up and I would have been calling myself a genius, right? I look for justified entries, not great entries all the time that are going to lead the most profits in the short term, but justified entries. So when I do go back and maybe if it does start to fall, I don't immediately want to panic sell because that was a justified and emotionless buy, okay? So going forward, where are these levels going to be? Let's clear this out. So with that, let me let me remove drawings. Here we go. OK, let's talk about my two big buying points, two very big buying points. Well, let's talk about some facts. Well, one fact of the matter is that as Bitcoin has fallen into the weekly Gaussian channel, there is one thing that has remained true over the last five years. And that is going to be the fact that when Bitcoin enters the daily God or the weekly Gaussian channel, sorry, every single time this has happened, it has gone to mid channel. Mid channel is going to be this line right here the middle of this channel okay it's happened every single time let me show you so what that means is that any time in the past that we have actually seen this happen we see here we've entered into the day uh, the weekly gaussian channel boom fell to mid channel entered in the weekly gaussian channel boom fell to mid channel went up closed above it never reached it went back down let's go back out boom Touched the Gaussian channel, didn't enter, went back up, lost support, fell into it, touched weekly. Now, or touched mid channel. Now, with this scenario here, it actually did fall through it. But we'll talk about that in a second. But let's keep going backwards. It's been every time, every single time to date. So let's go here, fell into the weekly Gaussian channel, boom, touch mid channel. And then that's the last that my data has. But like I said, it's been every single time. OK, so what that means for me is that if history does repeat itself, that we are going to see a continued fall to the downside if we don't bounce pretty soon. Now, there are, times change. Things are different. And I understand that patterns can be broken, but I am going to trade these patterns and invest off these patterns until they break. And once they break, I look for new patterns that match that new formation. OK, now, the pattern that I'm seeing here is unless somehow. We immediately spike out of this thing and shoot back up to like 35,000 and get out this Gaussian channel immediately. 
we're likely going to fall down into this this mid this mid this mid here okay and what this is is may continue something like that okay now i don't know when it'll be i don't know if it'll be this week i don't know if it'll be next week next month it could consolidate we could see a retest back up something like this could happen we could try to push back out of it fall back below and i mean we're already in the end of august okay but what i do know is that if history repeats itself we are going to touch the mid channel Okay, so that is buying point number one. Now, the reason that's buying point number one is because the interaction there is a 50-50 dependent on a few things. It kind of just depends on the, you know, the nature of the world at the point. But one thing I will say is that there have been multiple times in which we've entered the Gaussian, touched mid-channel, and worked our way back up. Entered the Gaussian, or, or we worked our way back up, fell back in, touched right around mid-channel. You get the point. Worked our way back up. Let's go here. Let's go a little bit further back, okay? And that, that let's just keep that because there's a few other examples, but this is the most clear one, okay? Let's go back, okay? So the reason I say that again is because as we did touch here, we started to work our way back up, but then we saw the pandemic start. And you guys know I say this all the time is that this is an anomaly in my opinion, okay? I believe that what we saw right here, this big fall off was an anomaly and that had the pandemic really not started to freak people out that much, that we wouldn't have seen this big fall and we would have likely been seeing some upward continuation as we did see almost immediately after, okay? And so what I mean is that there have been times, multiple times in the past that we have seen this entrance into the Gaussian and then that push back up. Okay, there have been three times that I could count that I could find, right? But let's talk about the other scenario. The other scenario is what we could, what, what the pattern that is repeating right now is that we could be coming off the top of a bull run right down into our Gaussian channel. I mean, that's what we're more than likely looking at right now, right? Top of a bull run down into our Gaussian channel. What this was right here was that retracement that we always look for, right? Now, what I mean by that is if I hide this, you can see that this wasn't the falling out of a bull run into the Gaussian channel. This is a retracement off the top of our previous bull run. Now, let me show you. We'll go here. We'll drag this here. And if I zoom in, you can see that a typical retracement, what that looks like is something like this, okay? We see some upward momentum, the price falls, and before it just continues falling, that's very unlikely. We see it climb up, boom, we see a fall, we see the retracement, and then it falls. That's how that typically works. Now, typically, this retracement point is going to be, if, if this is what we're looking at, that retracement point is if we go top to bottom, that retracement point goes usually, usually, back up to two points either here up to the 0 0.5 or up here into our 618 to our 786 and then we see our continued fall okay so what we were looking at back then was going to be this retracement almost perfectly right into that 618 dang it i didn't mean to do that there we go back into that 618 and then further downfall but so what that means is that if history is repeating itself we could be looking at a fall past our mid channel but you never really know what's going to happen right all i know is what i can control and what i can control is what i buy so based off of that based off the fact that even though this was a retracement just considering the fact that when we entered into the, the Gaussian channel that we ended up falling down to this level of support finding support establishing it isn't working our way back up that is going to be point number two of my accumulation that is when i'm going to be doing loads and loads and loads of buying now I say that it's not going to be like 100 percent of my cash it won't even be 50 percent of my cash but what it does mean is that this is a strong level of support that has provingly held in the past and that i will be buying at in the future now let's say if this falls through it so say i put 30 percent of my cash in right here right into all my different crypto safe moon ada bitcoin um polygon bnb um those right and say we continue to fall through it say that happens well where's my second point well provingly in the past provingly i'm only saying things that i can prove Provingly in the past, when we have fallen below mid-channel and have failed to establish the support, we have touched bottom of the Gaussian and fell through it, okay? Now, let me explain. So, I know this was an anomaly, but you can see it. We touched the middle of the Gaussian. We fell all the way through the Gaussian. We touched the middle of the Gaussian. We fell through it. Tried to establish support. Failed. We fell all the way through the middle of the Gaussian. It happened every single time. Again, like I said, these patterns, it's just a repetitive every time. Fell through. Couldn't establish support. Fell all the way through. Fell out. Okay? But there's a common thing here with where we're touching. Where are these lines touching in order for us to say, oh, okay, well, when it falls out the Gaussian channel, this is where it it's going well look at your 200 day moving average if we do go ahead and we show that there we go and now let's kind of zoom in a little bit if we go into our last uh bull market to bear market look at this well if we see let me hide i mean okay there we go 
So we can see here that as it's falling through our Gazi and lost support and falling through, it's a touch onto the 200 day moving average and a backup. We see here, we go in, lose the middle, fall down below, close at that 200 day moving average and work our way back up. That has been what history has shown us in the past. So that's going to be what I'm going to do in the future. Because as we can see, if we do just closely look, although it's not showing us that moving average there, we can see that that bottom was right around that point as well. So as we fell out that, you know, we fell out this bull market in 2013, 2014, we can see that on trajectory, we would have been somewhere around this region. So probably around that 200 day moving average, although there wasn't that moving average, right? So what that means to me is that is likely our bottom. That's likely our bottom. If we fall through it, we, of course, are going to have to figure out something else. But that is likely our bare minimum bottom. Right now, it's currently at, let's see, I'm going to remove drawings. Right now, it's currently sitting at right around 13,723, roughly. Now, the good thing about that is as time does go on, I do not believe it's going to be something like this. OK, don't get me wrong. I don't think it's going to be something like that. Right. That's a 50. What's that? A 54, 55 percent drop. Yeah, 52% drop, okay? But what that does mean is that I think if we were to fall, we would consolidate into it as we do work its way up, which would, of course, limit those losses. I don't think we're going to see a 54% loss. Let me show you what I mean. So the last time that we saw, you know, say we were say if we were right here in this area, okay, it, we were extended off of the 200-day moving average by about what? Pretty similar, 50 to 60%. Well, as time went on, as we did see some type of consolidation and working our way around those Gaussian channels and falling through it, that gap closed, right? So from that point, as it did extend and as the um, the 200-day MA did work its way up, it was only a 46% loss in comparison to at the time about a 61% loss. And so what that means is that I do believe that this is going to work itself up. I think the 200-day moving average is going to work itself back up this way somewhere. And then if we do fall to the very bottom, which I'm not saying we will, but I'm saying those are my big accumulational spots if we continue to fall i think that we would probably start to see it interacting somewhere around low 20 thousands if we reach that far okay now if you do want the points of support in which we would have to drop through in order to even reach these levels go watch yesterday's video it's titled is this the bear market where i talk about all of the different levels of support that are like right here right here and right here okay if we lose those and we continue downwards again the two points on which i'm looking to buy major major accumulation is mid channel on the gaussian right here bam and then if we lose that again and enter into a real bear market the 200 day moving average are my exact points in which i will be buying a lot i may buy a little bit here and there here and there but those are like 20 percent cash 30 percent cash those are like big 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 because i know what history has told us in the past is that from there we have seen growth of ridiculous magnitude so with that being said i will update you guys on any different changes anything that does happen when i do make these buys i'll be putting it in the patreon so go down to the link in the description go check it out and if you do want information about when i'm buying why i'm buying and what i'm buying again go sign up for the patreon and i appreciate it and i'll see you all there but with that being said you guys do know the drill i post one to two times every single day on this channel and i will see you all very very soon peace